Tennessee. When we were growing up, and like us, we are cousins to Joe. We didn't hear the music. It wasn't a part of our growing up. Uh, and I'm only talking about that time, that window between 55 and maybe 70. I'm just saying those of us who were growing up then just did not hear the music. Uh, it was told to us, or it was in the 70s when um, that this young guy, I think he was in one of the Greensboro colleges at that time, came looking for these black fiddlers. And I think it was at a time where the whole country was trying to do right by the African-American, that they had made several contributions to this country. And at that time, people were beginning to, to realize that and to accept that and to go looking yes. for those who had made those One contributions. One of the several reasons why I bought this house and had a finished basement. Wait a minute, you're suggesting that black fiddlers disappeared? They absolutely did not disappear. We just haven't documented them. I think that's really the truth. They were around, but people didn't pay any attention to them. I think that's, the, well, you found that out with black banjo players. You can see all the interest in black banjo players that's emerged over the years. I don't think fiddle players are that much different. It's just that they weren't documented and they certainly didn't appear in abundance on these race records in the 1920s. So it's really pretty recently that people have said, oh, there were, but there were black fiddle players around and that lineage goes back decades and decades, you know, into the 18th century. People are just now figuring that out. So it's just, it's not that they weren't there, it's that people didn't pay attention and didn't document them in the way that we think in the 21st century uh, would have made for uh, a deeper knowledge. And so I guess Kip Lonell decided that he would do it in music, in the folklore and music and that and that's when he came in this area and found Joe and Odell. <laughs>